Hey guys, hi there. <laughs> I've got myself a cup of instant coffee. It has cocoa in as well as a bit of spices, um, cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg mainly, and some honey because I like coffee to be slightly sweetened. It's my second cup of the day and I am going to try to talk to you guys. <laughs> and have some sort of a coherent tail over here. Uh, still got loads of snow out there. I don't know if you can see the whiteness, but it, to me it definitely looks uh, very different from my usual sort of a color profile, if that's a thing. Um, we had a couple of interesting to us realizations. Things seem to be settling down in terms of for us, my husband and I, our uh, personal level of adventurousness and crisis and chaos and that kind of thing, which after a while you can sort of reinterpret as adventure and then try to make sense of, you know, if you get a hold of your own personal sovereignty again in all that chaos. So hi, this is Aline. It is the uh, 10th of February in 2021 and it is Wednesday and I've been to the market and got me all sorts of gear again. I was really pleased to notice that my uh, market people had uh, turned up even though there is like, what is it? I suppose half a foot in uh, English terminology of snow still outside in areas where um, people haven't you know, been driving around. Most of the people on the market come from areas uh, from towns not too far away. And husband also has gone back to the office. So he reported in at uh, his lunch break that uh, the roads outside the towns are uh, quite manageable, what with uh, the snow. It's a very different type of snow than what we're used to. So that's been rather impactful. I am personally really glad that I uh, am past the uh, most tricky point of my menstruation because that make, makes me hypersensitive to cold. Even with Tumo and all, I still find that is, a, is just a period of two days, two and a half days or so, that I am just not as comfortable as I like to be. And what with the snow and the cold, the temperatures have been really a lot colder than what is normal for the Netherlands. So I'm very much hoping, oh, that's nice. I'm very much hoping that people um, in this country or elsewhere aren't, you know, affected even worse. I haven't seen any news reports or any, um, you know, hints and things from people so far. Most people seem to be enjoying the snow and the wintry uh, you know, wintry atmosphere and all that, quite a bit. So, but what with lockdown and COVID and all that, you wouldn't be surprised, would you, if there were, if people, uh, people are stronger than you think they are. So, yes, amen to that. So, other than that, this has been, actually, uh, it's really nice to look at. I've got all my bushes in my yard are covered in little hoods of snow all over. I am managing to feed the birds quite a bit. The birds are still fairly active. It is, uh, I looked it up, it is um, minus five degrees outside here in centigrade. In Fahrenheit that is 23 degrees apparently plus. So I'm really freaked out now that you have a different zero point for Fahrenheit degrees than you have for Celsius degrees, centigrade. That's just freaking me out right there. That doesn't make any sense. So I'm hoping to do some kind of a witch check-in because I've got lots of stuff where it all ties in with each other. And that's been the case over the past couple of months. I've said this before, where um, I'm getting deeper and more interesting but tricky benefits from my TUMO practice and that's of course um, well it's 
I still think it's the main reason why I make vlogs on YouTube to publish, to at least have some place where I can publish my story with my Tumo practice. So, and it's been getting trickier occasionally, but I think I have gotten over a big kind of a hurdle for myself. And that's actually the one thing I do want to talk about today. Uh, I'll go into that in a bit more detail in a bit. Um, also, one other thing is that I've recently talked about an experience that my husband has had, which wasn't directly tumor related, but which was related to his uh, sort of a soul retrieval experiences. I think I will have to make a separate video about that. That's a better idea, wouldn't you say? Because it's just too disparate. It's too different subject matter from what I want to talk about at this particular point, even though I'm really interested in it all. And I am relieved because I understand things better now because of something he said yet last night. And it turned out that it he had sort of thought that he had already told me about this change in, in um, or this different perspective that he had and hadn't really told me about this in this particular detail. So the result was that I just went like, oh, but I didn't know that. And that changes, sort of changes everything and makes it a lot easier for me to understand what it was that he's been going through. And that was making me very insecure over the past month and month and a half or so that we've been uh, investigating his, uh, his personal relationships, that there seem to be relationships and connections between him and his his ancestors, some of his ancestors, not all of them, on a spiritual level. And it's really interesting and it's really cool, but it's part two, okay? So I'll get back to that, I hope. <laughs> if I manage to do it all, maybe I can, you know, think of a way. I'll, I'll, I'll see how I can manage. For now, I just want to do a witchy check-in, which is what I tend to do when I'm sort of past the whole menstruation hurdle and life is starting to look a bit more, you know, sunny and bright and there's the sun. <laughs> starting to be, look a bit happier and more, you know, like you're capable of actually getting something done and you can more comfortable in a, in a way. So, yeah. So the the big realization that I had is I had uh, actually it's a more more of a sort of a psychotherapeutic um nature where um i don't know about you but i have had an upbringing and a past where all i knew was to a to a large extent whatever happened in life whatever uh kind of emotions you went through what kind of whatever kind of drama and turmoil you went through you always had to keep more or less a straight face. You had to present as if nothing was the matter ever. And in combination with a couple of other things where I think the main thing for me is that I didn't get the level of personal attention from my parents because of the problems they had between them and personal problems that they had themselves, both of them they treated me to uh, some extent like I was some sort of a toy in their lives when I was a little girl, which I think is very common, freakishly and disgustingly common to treat, especially small kids under the age of four or so, as toys, as if they are, or puppies, you know, as if they're, and you shouldn't treat a puppy like it is a toy even. It is a living being with emotions and needs and all that. And you can overdo that as well. You should also leave kids alone sometimes and let them do their thing and let them sort it out for themselves. I'm all about that. But for myself, I've noticed. What I've noticed is what happened. Here's what happened. For the hundredth time or so, there was a bit of an interaction, not even that specific really, with uh, somebody outside the house where they tend to be um, you know, a bit demanding, a bit difficult. And what we get is a whole set of reactions to the demands and 
both of us, both my husband and I tend to overdo it 100% on the whole having to be there for other people kind of a thing. So uh, it becomes, it very quickly becomes a crisis. So this is what we call a crisis nowadays. <laughs> I'm quoting here from the Boss Baby uh, animation movie, which is one of my favorites, where there's a character who constantly says, don't you know we're having a crisis here? So that, I thought that was really funny. So the crisis for me very easily, very quickly, actually instantly becomes um, a combination. It's like a everything is get, sort of gets screwed together in my brain and I have uh, fear and anxiety. I have anger. I have a terrible sense of isolation and loneliness and inadequacy. Uh, and I feel uh, like everybody's going to abandon me and things like that. All in one, it's basically one physical sense of terror and, oh, you know, it's awful. It really is quite awful. And I'm instantly scared by something or somebody and they, that happens, it comes into my house, it comes into my relationship with my husband my husband turns away from me to get upset for himself about this whole deal that's happening. It was like this big. <laughs> it wasn't even a deal. You can't call this a deal. It was like infinitesimal. But it's still, it becomes this whole crisis and we have no idea what we're doing. And I don't want to at all ever, you know, expect my husband to turn away from whatever it is that he needs to be doing to look after me. I am not his child, nor is he my child, although I have done lots of things for him and looked, looked out for him and, you know, made things happen for him even in terms of healing and energy work and stuff like that. Um, I, I want us to be as independent from each other mentally and emotionally as we can be while at the same time acknowledging the fact that we are very close very deeply connected and whatever happens to the one happens to the other guy as well that's kind of how things go and most of the time that's really positive it makes us really strong it makes the relationship has been this has been going on for 34 years so we have we we know everything about each other mutually the other guy is very reliable is always doing their utmost you know and so on and so forth so there's nothing wrong at all with the relationship it is the the thing is that what i what i the realization that i came to which i want to share with you at this point if i can is uh about how a lot of the emotions that create a crisis, really, so a phase of hopefully less than a day, but sometimes for other people it may last several days, I don't know. Those elements are always there. And you have to figure out how to deal with them. And what I figured out is it's like, it's, I don't know if it's going to be easy to explain because I just have to shift my focus away from defending myself, becoming angry and upset and uh, impossible to live with, especially for myself, you know, Yee, all the frantic, all the crisis attitudes. I have to let those go. Because if I can, you know, rely on my husband, if I can make myself aware at the moment that this is happening, that I am feeling like this, if I can make myself realize that my husband is there for me and he's willing to listen to what I have to say, provided I say something productive, right? 
then I can actually say, look, this is making me feel really anxious. Oh, it's like the end of a world and the beginning of a new one. I swear to you. I have to say, this is making me feel really anxious. This is making me feel uh, so alone. This is making me feel like I am uh, completely helpless and it hurts. And, you know, a couple of phrases like that, really. Instead of going on about whatever else is wrong with the situation and wrong with other people and so on and so forth. The reason why this has suddenly become a big deal, why it is also working for me, if I do this, if I say, this is making me feel such anxiety. This is making me feel like I have no say in anything. Like I have no influence. There's nothing I can do. If I say it like that, I relieve myself in here of two thirds of my tension. I do that by saying it that, like that. So I thought that was pretty magnificent <laughs> because I noticed it. I yes, said it a couple of times yesterday during our discussion. And uh, there were just a couple of moments, just like when I make a vlog like this, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. But if I do it afterwards, I always feel a whole lot better. I feel energized. I feel motivated again. I feel like things are, it's possible to have a life. Who would have thought, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. And two thirds of that is because I spoke the right words. I spoke my truth. Which is, not I hate this, yes I hate this, but it is because it's making me feel like I am back in the dumps with my mother 30, 40 years ago. Where I had no power, where I had integrated her powerlessness that she had felt with her mother back in the day. All those things, all those patterns. And... It really helps me to just say, gosh, this hurts. This is just too painful. And instead of reacting, you see where I'm going with this? It is a, you would think that it is something that we had figured out by now. I figured this out and I had, except that it's continually changing, moving. It's like a spectrum, like that's been given to us before you know it's been it's often been said i've said it before there's a spectrum where at the one end you're always only about defending yourself the only thing that you can see the only way you can live the only way you can get things done is by being this defensive person and i think at the dark end of that is where narcissism lies basically where it has all everything has just become this complete prison and nothing gets in or out ever in that case that's nearly psychotic i think it's certainly pathological nothing gets in or out most people tend to live a bit away from the complete dark side but still in my world in the world where i live most of the time um, a lot of the people I, I meet, not just my husband or his colleagues, but male, female, doesn't matter what age they are, uh, people tend to just um, be on the defensive most of the time. They're always, and it's maybe a, a reflection because it was me. I was that way. I have certainly been that way all my life where I define myself through a sort of a resistance to the world around me. I define myself, I, I am me as a result of being not the other thing, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, it becomes math like that. 
this is hot water not so very hot anymore but still very good for me very good for my lymphatic system helps to drain the lymph glands and I drink two or three of these mostly three or even four uh, every day so there you go in case you hadn't heard me say that before it makes a massive difference in my life when, when if I uh, I do not have a day without at least two of these of her watcher that is uh, just a bit more than um, you know it's it shouldn't be lukewarm it should be quite uh, as hot as you can drink it really without steam coming out of your nostrils and ears you know the thing is all the other beverages coffee and tea do have a dehydrating effect on your lymphatic system and this is uh, replenishing that right so sorry I um, have come to this conclusion where by just saying the things as they are I am giving myself so much more space and so much more room to breathe that that by itself already it's something I can do, right? It doesn't depend on anybody else. It doesn't depend on what they think, really. Except the more defensive people are that I have to deal with, the harder it gets, of course. Because often you're pushed into the defense by somebody being on the offense the whole time. Which is why I say, uh, regarding narcissistic uh, relationships, people with... You know, people that narcissistic people that you're in a relationship with, that you can't uh, do anything sensible with them ever because they have decided a long time ago, way before you you came into the picture, you know, that um, they weren't going to let you in ever. But we don't know that. We don't know at what level we are supposed to live and what level of authenticity is what I'm saying here. And that's the spectrum, I think. And I'm moving to the other end of the spectrum that I was talking about just now, where the only thing I can do, because of TUMO, because of my my TUMO thing, and that's what this is, what is really behind this whole story here, is I have noticed a couple of things uh, as to the whole TUMO. I Always when I'm having my period and in the week before that, my tumo tends to be less uh, intense, less powerful, less present. It, it fluctuates quite a bit. I have noticed something really crucial to the level of tumo that I can access and also to the quality of the tumo because there's differences in, in how how it feels and what it can do and so on and so forth um, that I can talk to you about. Um, what I can certainly say is that the whole TUMO work that I have done in here, in my whole chest area, is uh, the, the result of that is, is, is constant. The result is permanent. There is permanent change happening that happened in here uh, also in my throat area quite a bit. Um, my tonsils are improving slowly and regularly. The hot water is helping with that, but it's not the cause of the change. The cause of the change is the detoxing that happens with the tumor energy and the, um, the general principle that is applied here is getting energy where there used to be less or not enough energy in in your system so that's what's been happening um if you don't know what i'm talking about tumo is a particular specific form of kundalini yoga where it isn't talked about that much you can look it up on the internet but there, and there are occasionally uh websites or people talking about this in a way that actually um makes sense to me you know very rarely really and it's interesting because it is truly powerful truly helpful but um 
for some reason I got into this, I got into uh, investigating whether it was possible to do this type of meditation, you know, this type of energy work really, without a teacher present, without somebody telling me exactly what to do, without the, uh, I don't know, without a system that had been, you know, thought out and developed by people over generations uh, in time. I didn't know whether it was going to be possible, but I started on this uh, on this process uh, about a year ago, slightly more than a year ago. And I am by now in a phase where I feel uh, quite a bit more confident about the whole thing. It is something I do um, nearly every day, really. It's really easy to do for me. I, the, the main thing I have to do is get relaxed enough and physically, uh, you know, chilled out enough for me to, uh, you know, get enough, get enough uh, of a sense of the Kundalini energy again. Certainly with this type of cold weather. Tumo is something that is normally spoken of only um, to help you get more physical heat. But it is, that is one specific um, way of using the Kundalini energy. Personally, I still haven't completely figured out, I'm getting there, but I haven't completely figured out um, what the trick is. What is the exact trick? But I'm learning new things all the time. So it is quite possible that I'm, uh, you know, close to getting there. In, in case that is something that I really need. As it is, I'm sitting here, it is minus 5 degrees out there. My central heating is on 17 degrees plus, which I thought, I would have thought of as unbearably cold uh, last year. And so I'm fine. I do have quite some pullovers on, but that wouldn't have made much of a difference. I have noticed an increase in my body heat. Um... I have warm hands, my feet are sort of more or less warm, you know. I'm uh, completely fine and in ways that would have been unlikely. But all that is fairly, um, I, don't, I don't suppose you'd be able to measure it really. And not that I care, but it's just, I notice that in practical results, my husband, when he gets here, he turns up the heater to 20 immediately. I tend to turn on the heater at the end of the afternoon because it cools down. But with all that snow outside, I should be I should be freezing and I'm not. I'm fine, you know. So, yeah. Um what I've noticed which I think is really important about this whole kundalini thing, kundalini, shakti energy and tumo to me are all the same thing now. Tumo is a particular focus and focus exercise as a, a, a way of of focusing i've said this before but i'm just going to keep repeating it on and off in case this is the first video of mine that you see you know you're gonna what you're gonna talk about the um the principle is that you incorporate uh the the kundalini energy that you can feel you have to be able to feel your shakti energy and then you have to be able to feel where your dantians are. Those are, that's a principle out of Chinese medicine. There are three dantians in the body. And I've used what by now number one and number two uh, regularly. And their function of the dantians is to transform shakti energy into tumo. That's how I look at it. And then you spend quite a lot of time months in fact um getting used to this new vibration inside you applying the vibration allowing for the vibration because it doesn't really do a lot of things for you unless you let it you still have to say yes to the tumo quite a number of times in areas in your heart for example where you do, you do not know maybe what type of pain is in there it will drag it all to the surface. So 
uh, not only do you have to know how to deal with that, do you, you have to know what the nature of the pain is. You have to find ways to express that, um, give shape to that, make room for all those experiences uh, for the, because the kundalini the shakti demands that it demands authenticity if you suffered you just gotta acknowledge that the the hopeful the good thing the good side to that is that if you do that the shakti will make you a lot more powerful and it will give you tons of courage and tons of I don't know, I suppose uh, there's a lot that I don't really care about that much anymore. It's just a fallen off, a sense of obligation to people is the first thing that went out the window, you know? Obligation as in a construct, a uh, loyalties, ideology, um, culture, you know, you shouldn't blah, you should only do blah. All that type of stuff. It's, I'm not interested. I want to be alive. I want to feel alive. I want to be here and be the best version of myself that I can be. Right, Which is something you hear people say a lot. So in order for all that to become possible during the tumor, as soon as you, you know, presupposing that you've actually got the exercise right and you know what it is that you're supposed to be feeling when this tumor is happening and all this focus is actually happening um in the course of the time afterwards and as you practice you have to grow a relationship with your own shakti energy with your tumo it is something that it, it is like um to some extent, to a large extent, I have seen it myself as we see the strength card in the tarot, the woman with the lion. Tumo is like an animal. If you treat it well, if you give it room, if you give it love and peace, it will give those things back to you. But you have to communicate with it and it's all physical and nonverbal and it's emotional and if you say no at a certain point because you just can't do it yet, that's fine. I have not one time at all experienced my tumo bulldozing me. Never. If I don't let something happen, it doesn't happen. So that's the good news, right? It's really a lot less of a fight than I even expected this whole kundalini thing um that being said if you 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 have to be you have to be aware of the points where this is happening to you and i think that for a lot of people that is where they will be in trouble not so much because they uh say no and they would get bulldozed if you suppose you're in that situation, you say no to your kundalini invading your heart area, for example, and it still happens. You would interpret that as the kundalini bulldozing you. What I think happens at that point is that your heart itself very clearly decided that it was time to incorporate this to incorporate this energy it wants the kundalini because it does all parts of your body are meant to harmonize with kundalini with shakti always and if they don't it is because of your personal history and because of the history of your family and the pain and you know abandonment and isolation and all those things so you can think i'm not gonna have this i'm not wanting this i don't want to do this or i will do it but in six months time for example but if vibrationally inside your 
innards say, never mind, we want this now. And you don't, you think that you're in control and you're not, then bulldozing is going to happen. Then you're going to get blown away by whatever it is that happens. And hopefully most of the time, I hope, you know, um, you would uh, soon realize that it actually feels a whole lot better with the Tumo energy in there. And you will, you know, after a bit of back and forth for me, <laughs> trying to get, you know, trying to get used to this different vibration, um, you'll be okay with it. You learn, you will learn to work with it. You will learn to live with it. That's what's supposed to uh, to happen. And it, this is more or less, it's a, I'm describing what happened to me also. This is, um, but mo for me, most of the time, it was really easy to say yes. To say yes and to do yes. And to not have a difference between those two things, you know? Where I think I'm not having it and I am, you know, inside. Occasionally there's been a phase where I could feel in my thymus area in particular. I seem to recall that there was a phase where I just uh, felt really tired mo mostly. And it was... Um, a bit more difficult to let it in and it hurts the first couple of times having two mo in here and in in this whole series of, of channels in here it was quite painful and once it has gone through a couple of times there's actually a channel going from your heart and from your thymus like that to your backbone so all the way all the way through right an energy channel not a not a blood vessel or anything like that just an it's a vibrational channel and there's a third one that is sitting if this is my heart and this is my thymus there's another channel sitting slightly in between the two of them and now the sun is gone so like that underneath the thymus and they all three need to be accessible to the tumor energy there is also what i've noticed what's what's still the case for me is that there is a shield in front of a vibrational shield in front of those channels all of them so like like this as if almost as if you had your hand uh on your heart like that um and the tumor energy has to go into the shield first and from the shield it goes into those channels and then all the way into the back and then there's a channel going along the spine up and down like that and so it all gets joined up eventually but this is a process of fits and starts i am coming now to a uh, set of uh, a week or 10 days or so well I, where i will be doing a lot more intenser tumo because it's easier in this part of, part of the month for me to do it. And I get more Shakti energy. It's more readily available and it's there's more of it. And so when I bring it to the Dantian, the Dantian also cooperates. And there's another thing I wanted to talk about. The whole Dantian, um, it seems like the Dantians are, um, I haven't even looked really, whether there's any like an, like a nervous system or anything physical that supports the um, this, this this awareness that is there that actually does this work. What we've noticed is that the uh, the Dantians have like moods, like they can be like this and they can be like this. And the larger the Dantian is, and that's something that you can actually make happen if you have contact with it and you can, uh, you, you've, you've figured out how to do that. It's quite, this is quite tricky and I'm, I'm, I'm even hesitating to talk about this. I have been hesitating to talk about this because we've had a couple of instances where even just talking about it, it is really easy for one's dantian so even for your dantian over there wherever you are hi 
<laughs> welcome to the weirdness, <laughs> um, to start doing what it is that I'm saying here without your participation <laughs> in it. So if that happens, don't be alarmed because it's probably the best thing anyway. If the Dantian is like this, closed in on itself, it is because survival wasn't completely self-evident. Uh, we did not feel safe. We were afraid. We were having our periods or we were pregnant or any of a number of other reasons along the same vein, you know. If the Dantian goes, opens up, it stretches out in all directions really in in both our both our sides sorry for the sms noise that was just a message coming in. i should really uh turn off my sound should i okay so that was successful i think we shouldn't be disturbed anymore by weird noises the dantian is more of a a, a thing in two halves like that a left and a, and a right side to it and it will uh, it can expand easily in the uh, sort of 90 degree angle to the sides of you on the left and the right uh, to the front sides, you know, halfway, the 45 degree angle like that and the 150 degree angle to the back of you. Those are the angles or this is the, the, the two halves of you where the in, in which direction the Dantian will easily uh, expand. There's a co couple of consequences that this has. When the Dantian expands, the middle channel also expands. And the other consequence is that when the lower Dantian does this type of an exercise, this uh, middle Dantian, the heart Dantian, will follow along in the same uh, movement. And it has been said to me that the same happens to number three Dantian up here, which I haven't really engaged with so far yet because I've been busy with all the other things. And I've tried to sort of park that in the future where, you know, it'll, <laughs> we will get there when we get there. But I'm not going to do everything at the same time because I'm going nuts enough as it is, you know. So what happens, which is why I'm, cautioning everybody to be careful about this Dantian business. What you get, Dantian expands, the middle channel opens up over here in the underbelly region, as well as in the heart area and potentially in our scullies at the same time. And the middle channel opening, that is the Shakti highway. What you get is an immense load of Shakti, if you're not careful, cannoning upward into the cosmos, breaking out of your brain, breaking out of your, your crown chakra like that, and all hell breaks loose. <laughs> because I don't, I'm not a fan of, of the middle channel. I mean, it's there. Once you're, you're, once all the rest of the drama in our lives is dealt with and you know, out the window and we're done with all that. Fine, go ahead and do this type of exercise any odd way you want, any way, you know, it's fine. And I suppose eventually it is about, the whole thing is about psycho-spiritual integration. But that's, that's a handful. Actual, real-time real life psycho spiritual integration it's that's the story of your life all of it everything you know so i do not take that kind of kind of thing lightly <laughs> i don't take it lightly so with the middle channel opening with the dantian expanding you're going to get the middle channel opening and that's what happened to my husband in his story, which will be part two, which I will probably record tomorrow. He had an event whereby this area opened up and a whole 
new range of emotion manifested itself to him in a way that was quite dramatic and uh, scary. And I've spoken about it before. It had to do with, uh, you know, his relatives and his ancestors. And he was he, he, he experienced a sense of connection that was intensely spiritual. And it was very sudden, very emotional. And it looked like he was going to be a wreck for the rest of the day. And he wasn't. He was fine. But that was in a way that was even scarier. The fact that he was fine within 15 minutes from the meltdown. That was extraordinarily weird. So... I am cautioning everybody about this whole Dantian thing. It is very useful, but you should do more Tumo beforehand and then see what happens. And if there's one thing I can give you in this whole Tumo story here, it is pay attention to your own processes and follow the lead of what it needs in here. Follow your own physical lead if possible see where the tumor wants to go if it wants to go to the same place 15 times in a row there's a reason for that if it wants to stick in your underbelly uh there's a reason for that you know so that's um i myself have been using this opening of the dantians uh last week when it was a bit more difficult for me to get to Mo. I have been using it to access the energy more easily and that has helped me. But I managed to basically stick at a level where it is Tumo 1. So Tumo, primary Tumo is the level that is transformed in the first Dantian only. And then I go up here and I get secondary Tumo where this number one energy is transformed again. And you get a you get a, a refined version, a, a further development on the basis of Tumo 1. You get what I call secondary Tumo by now. And that's the level I've been using. I've been using the secondary Tumo in my throat area, in my, in my uh, you know, lower half of my skull. Mainly uh, trying to get as much energized as possible trying to uh but like i said we had other things to deal with there is all these things the weather <laughs> relationship things that you haven't completely figured out yet um history that is in your system that you have no clue is there or maybe you do have a clue it's there but you've never had to interpret the whole thing as a massive challenge that needs work in whatever shape or form so I would certainly advocate you know figure out where the challenges are map it out for yourself uh, do what works for you if it works for you to go outside and run uh, every day or you know do sports and you just need that then that is what you should be doing you should never I, I think one mistake that people make with, uh, you know, diets and uh, meditation habits and trying to improve their lifestyle and all that, is that they go to a method, a new method, and they're all excited about it and they love it. And then they want the, the person that they would be with that method for 25 years, only they want it tomorrow. And it just doesn't work that way. You... If you want the method, any method, and that applies to Tumo just as much as anything else in life, you know. Um, if, the, if you want the method to work for you, you have to work for the method. <laughs> so that's what I've been doing. I've been um, doing a lot of spinning and knitting because my husband wants one of these now. So I'm really pleased that he likes my knitwear uh, so much that I can, uh, you know, just go go ahead and I'm busy for a couple of months here, just uh, getting all the spinning done and uh, color spinning in here that takes a whole lot of time, getting all the uh, all the threads, all the colors. See, there's lots of colors, and uh, it's also very enjoyable to do. It is something that works for me, and um, 
Oh my God, it's snowing again. They said it might. <laughs> we never, I have wanted snow for so long, so many winters. I lived in this house for, what is it? Eight years, is this the eighth winter or the ninth? I don't know. And I've seen occasional, um, you know, f bits snowy weather for like half a day or so, or a day. And then I think one time or twice maybe in this house, in this period of time that I lived here, there were there was like a, a phase of actual snow and then the snow staying on the ground for a couple of days afterwards. And never this much. I have these massive snow pies there. This is nearly a f two thirds of a foot, you know, <laughs> of snow lying on top of everything. And it goes like very softly, the edges like that. And everything is covered in, in these beautiful uh, sand dune type layers and lines of, of snow, like I showed you in my little vlog earlier this week. It's awesome. I love it. <laughs> but it's cold. It's really cold. So expanding the Dantian, right? That's what I was talking about. Has this effect on increasing the Shakti flow quite a lot, but it tends to go whoop up into, uh, up into the next levels, you know, immediately. Whereas what you do want to get more physical heat is for the whole thing to stay in the nether regions as much as possible because the heat is generated in the lower dantian and there's more there that i still don't that i don't i haven't figured that out completely yet some of it is automatic a lot of the tumor energy as soon as you practice it after you've practiced this for a couple of months you will notice an increase in heat or in ease you know physical comfort it does something for your levels of comfort anyway um because relaxation is crucial your your body figures out how to be relaxed like this much more of the time it says yes to the relaxation and no to the tensions a lot more so i'm completely convinced that that alone is already uh, a massive health benefit that I'm uh, that I'm having here. So that anybody doing this is having. So yeah. Um, in terms of tumor, do I have any more? I wanted to stress it's important for me to stress this idea of having a relationship with your energy, your shakti energy. So whether I say shakti or whether I say tumor, I tend to use the word tumor when I am stressing it as a part of the meditation practice, the focus, the, the way you work with it. If you are looking at it as a sort of a mechanism, then, then I call it tumo. If you're not so much into the actual thing happening with the different layers and the parts of you and all that, you may as well call it Shakti. And uh, I don't use the term Kundalini, although I've said Kundalini Yoga often these days. It's not my favorite term because Kundalini is what everybody associates with chakras. And um, although I did also, which I haven't reported on yet, um, done a whole like a Tumo integration into my solar plexus. So that's your stomach area right there, you know. And the funny thing is that if you look at a um, third chakra lotus diagram, so the symbol, right? They have 10 petals always. The, uh, the number of petals and the whole symbology and the triangles and all the rest of it for each chakra is specific and always the same and traditional, right? So the third chakra, the solar plexus um what is it what is it? manipura uh, chakra is always repre represented with those 10 petals what i've noticed is that there is a which is probably what they're expressing with this with this 
diagram like that, maybe it's completely obvious to a lot of people, I don't know, is that for me, the solar plexus appears as a large central um, channel area like that. And it's surrounded by different smaller channels coming out in the same direction forward, which I think is the explanation for the term solar plexus. It's a knot of different channels coming together, being in a almost like a, I don't know, an old fashioned car light where you have a light in the front and it has little lights all around it like that, except these are bigger. And for me, I haven't noticed so much 10 different smaller channels around as uh, six actual channels, one to the left, one to the right of the middle, large vortex like that. And there's even more little ones to the sides of those. And then it seems to me like the solar plexus itself has a, um, a cross um, pattern across it. There's a difference in nature from the middle outward, going to the sides and going to the top like that. And then there's like these small channels on either side of that for some somehow or other. But I don't get to a number of, of 10 different secondary little channels at, the, at all like that. doesn't matter. It's an impression that I have at this time. And as you get in there with Tumo, more and more things become clearer. What I did notice is that there's a deep connection going in to deeper levels of this whole third chakra area. It's like a, it goes in and it becomes a whole set of um, layers of rings going in, going wider also inside you and each has some kind of a function, I suppose. I can't see that immediately. What I did do was I connected the Tumo energy to my adrenal glands in the back towards my backbone, which is what I tend to do each time when I investigate a chakra area like that with my Tumo energy. I try to go in there and see whether there's any pain or any resistance and then sit there with Tumo energy as, as long as it takes really several times. One thing I have noticed, I've said this uh, in one of my comments that I pinned to a video. <coughs> Sorry. Um, my breathing has become a whole lot easier. My lungs and my uh, all my breathing stuff in here has had a lot of an easier job over the past month since I did this whole to mow in these channels business that that has been that as well as the body heat uh, increase those two things have been really noticeable like absolutely um like there's no doubt that something really big happened there and especially the thymus area here the tumor in there gosh that hurt the first couple of times and actually it's still quite sensitive and as the week progresses, I'll get more Tumo in there. And it's, you know, it becomes easier that way again. It is always the problems stem from blockages, from not having enough energy where it should be. Am I an hour in? Gosh, I'm an hour in. I'm quitting. <laughs> this is a lengthy update. Thank you for watching. I am uh, quitting right now because uh, I want to stay under an hour if at all possible. Thank you. See you next time. Bye for now.